It's a great honor to be here. I am Hillary Franz, the Commissioner of Public Lands in Washington State. There's only five Commissioner of Public Lands in the country, so we're pretty much one of the best ideas out there with the least amount of knowledge of what we do. But I basically oversee six million acres of public lands, aquatic lands in Washington State, forest, agricultural lands, commercial, industrial, and residential lands that generate hundreds of millions of dollars for our schools and basic health, housing, and human services. I also oversee wildfire as well as five live volcanoes, the threat of an earthquake, tsunami. I'm hoping none of those erupt in my lifetime because wildfire fires is enough. Um, so I am Hillary and I love to start this because we, we oftentimes talk around climate and it's a really overwhelming, daunting thing and sometimes can get us depressed. But my name is Hillary and they means actually one who never saw a cloud on a rainy day. And when you lead wildfire, you're hoping for a lot of cloudy, rainy days. So I do bring a lot of optimism with those cloudy, rainy days. But this conference, I'm always thrilled to be here because it brings most of the ideas, the intelligence and innovation every single year that we need more of. Um, we are constantly being thrown images of disaster, hurricanes, floods, drought, wildfire, and news stories after news stories that are predicting even more dire situation. It's easy to get discouraged after seeing the images that we all saw in New York City, where we literally could not see the new iconic New York City skyline because of the smoke. And the problem with all that bad news and bad images is that it fills us with anxiety depression and despair, a sense of hopelessness and a sense of helplessness. And in the face of climate change, that it's true is that the opposite of the response we want. We, it's the opposite of the response we truly need right now. So if you just think about it, you have a child, I have three boys, and they have their sights set on winning the state championship, right? You don't empower them to their goal by bombarding them with images of defeat and past and present poor performance. You empower them by saying, set big lofty goals and work tirelessly to get there. Our greatest accomplishments all start with a great idea. And then they start with a sense of urgency a sense of courage, a sense of commitment, a sense of confidence. And frankly, that's what we need more than ever when it comes to climate change. And that's also what we need, not just when it comes to our environmental challenges, but because climate change isn't just presenting environmental crisis, it's also presenting an economic crisis and a social crisis. So in the Pacific Northwest, we have all woken up to the fact that wildfire is here. And my state and my team every single year are on the front lines of a rapidly changing climate. It isn't something that is any longer far off in the future. It's front and center in our minds, whether we are in a high-risk wildfire community or whether we're just experiencing the smoke-filled skies. In Washington, every year our wildfire season is growing, not only in the number of fires, but also the geography, where we're now fighting fires for nine months of the year in every single corner of the state, including our rainforest. You know, 70 years ago, the Commissioner of Public Lands, Burt Cole, he was just lamenting the horrific wildfire season 70 years ago. That year, 600 acres burned. In 2020, literally, in just 72 hours, we had 1,000 times that area burn. We lost an entire town where 80% of those homes burned down in just a few hours, and we had the worst air quality in the world from Spokane to Seattle. The third year in a row we had had that. And as we many may know, wildfires are second largest greenhouse gas emissions. And the communities that are being hit so hard by wildfires are the same ones who also have been struggling with economic unemployment and decades of high underemployment, as well as generational poverty. They also are the same communities where housing has risen through the roof. In our communities and much of our rural areas now, we're finding that what might have been an old minor shack of 800 square feet that used to go for less than $100,000 is now going to $800,000, which is truly creating a homelessness that is crippling every community across our state. And it's incredibly depressing to hear that. But I'd like to flip the narrative. In Washington, we decided we could not just be reactive. We could not just keep running from one fire to the next. And instead, we had to quickly put the fires out while working fast and furiously to restore the health of our forests. So in 2018, we set a goal to restore the health of 1.25 million acres of forest in 20 years, not just on state land, but federal, state, private, and tribal lands. We rapidly scaled up from one person to an entire program with our agency, removing the dead, dying trees, smaller diameter trees, creating more space so our trees could get healthier so they're not competing for so much for the limited amount of moisture or soil nutrients or sunlight. And we worked at the pace and scale of wildfire so that by the end of this year, just six years in, 
we will be halfway, almost halfway to our goal. Our goal is now to not achieve our 20 year old goal in 10, in 20 years, but to achieve it in 10 years, reducing the smoke, the destruction of fish and wildlife habitat, and obviously these horrific greenhouse gas emissions. As healthy forests, these forests can safely fight these wildfires on their own. But we're not just restoring the health of our forests, we're also restoring the social and economic fabric of our communities. With our commitment to restore 1.25 million acres of forest, we sent a message to the marketplace that if you're interested in cross-laminated timber or mass timber, where you take dead, dying, diseased trees, smaller diameter, you even take the charred, burned trees, come to Washington State, build manufacturing facilities in Washington State, because we promise you product so that you can do that kind of development. And within two years of launching that plan, not even implementing it fully, we now have two of the largest cross laminate timber, mass timber facilities in Washington state in two of our communities that are one, some of the most economically depressed and they're providing good paying jobs. And we have now two more facilities on their way. The beauty of CLT and mass timber is it's taking that waste product that would otherwise burn and pollute the environment. And it's now turning into building product. And if you think about, it's not just a beautiful building product, it's actually a carbon sequestering, efficient, lighter building product that can go up faster and more quickly, just like our fires, we put them out. We're now building cross laminate timber housing in our biggest of cities and our smallest of towns on our own state lands. 18 story affordable housing units are going up all the way down to small single family. Because as we race to put out our fires and restore our forests, we're also racing to increase our housing supply to solve our homelessness and affordable housing crisis. CLT is providing that solution, reducing catastrophic fires, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, restoring the health of our forests, creating jobs in our long-standing economically depressed communities, and providing fast carbon efficient wood product for housing, schools, and hospitals. It's good for the planet, it's good for our economy, and it's good for our communities. But burn dying disease trees weren't our only waste product in our forest that are increasing our catastrophic fires. As our team was working fast and furiously to double down on our forest health goals, from 20 years to 10 years, we were left with a challenge. These massive piles of wood waste from our forest health treatments, slash piles, in some cases they're a quarter acre in size. They look like massive bonfires out in the woods. The problem is, is they are massive bonfires in the woods. And so we either have to burn them ourselves, which costs us time, money, and huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions, or mother nature does it itself, which obviously creates enormous amount of significant wildfire and threat to communities. The challenge was we didn't have enough resources, staff and money to burn these piles. We also didn't have a buyer of these piles or anybody who would take it away for free. In addition, we have over a million acres of agriculture land in Washington state that I oversee. We actually are the state's largest wheat producer, we're becoming the largest orchard producer and vineyard producer, uh, which is generating hundreds of millions of dollars for our schools over each decade. Besides providing this critical wood food source for our state and economic opportunity, we truly see this as a community opportunity if we can find a solution. Enter biochar. It's literally the black gold for our climate crisis. We are now working with companies to open a biochar facility. One of them is here today. This facility will take our high volume slash pile waste from our forests and even our agriculture lands and convert it into biochar. So instead of emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, biochar is gonna take that pi and through pyrolysis, lock up the carbon in the wood waste to keep it out of the atmosphere for good. One facility will each year reduce 290,000 metric tons of CO2 by preventing wood burning into the atmosphere. The pyrolysis process also creates renewable energy that our local utility is now buying that gas as it burns and putting it back to actually provide energy to over 13,500 homes a year. It also becomes a soil supplement that as we see increasing drought and increasing need for production on our agricultural lands, it will help us continue that production even with less water because it is more drought resistant and reduces the need for food or fertilizer nutrients. Again, this is another solution that is good for the planet, it is good for our economy, and it is good for our communities. Now, the previous speaker talked about heat domes, and it's true our forests are not the only ones getting hotter. Heat now is the deadliest weather disaster in all of our country. 
year after year killing more people than flooding, tornadoes, and hurricanes. And in cold, wet Washington, the heat dome in 2021 took over 100 lives. And many of the lives that are impacted are communities of color and lower income communities where there can literally be a 13 degree difference between their community and a wealthy affluent white community. Lower income communities and communities of color have too much historically been plagued with the industrialization of their lands as well as concrete asphalt and extremely limited trees and parks. And we also know that smoke isn't the only thing impacting our air quality. The answer to increasing health risks of heat and pollution is trees. Trees make our communities healthier. Trees in our communities help us reduce the air pollution, mitigate the impacts of climate change, and they also increase the mental, emotional health and quality of life as much of us experienced during COVID. They also reduce carbon emissions. In Washington State, we have set a big goal. We have a big idea that we are going to be the first state in the nation to achieve true tree equity in every single neighborhood of the state. Our goal is to guarantee that everyone will have access to clean air, cooler temperature, and nature. To achieve this goal, we will have to plant 13 million trees. And in working towards this goal, we're not just going to create a healthier environment, we're not just going to create healthier communities, but we're also creating a healthier economy. As we're struggling to hire the next experts in natural resources and forestry, and also as we see a number of people who are looking for work, either underemployed or unemployed, we are now building a workforce pipeline that is going to be for members of underserved communities or communities for too long have been locked out in nature or not had pathways to nature, for our formerly incarcerated and for our veterans to embark on careers in support of environmental and social justice via, via the tree equity work that we are launching. Again, another solution that is good for the planet, good for the economy, and good for our communities. I don't have a lot of time. I will launch with one other idea before I close, which is check out basalt. We are now taking our basalt rocks that have been sitting there for centuries that literally was not providing any money for our schools and counties. And we've now leasing those basalt rocks. They're not moving an inch. They're pumping carbon into the basalt where it will be locked in for hundreds of thousands of years. Unbelievable. And we get a check for the schools. It is easy to really get depressed and feel a sense of despair. When the smoke fills our skies, the floods consume our cities. It's also a time that I experience those feelings a lot. And when I do, I actually have to think about the firefighters. Every year, over a thousand men and women, some as old as my middle son, join my wildfire team, men and women working 16 hour days, weeks on end, months on end, in some of the most hot and arduous conditions. These firefighters, they never once throw their hands up and quit. They never once do run away from the fire. In fact, they do the exact opposite. They run straight into it with full confidence and a belief that they will succeed. And they never wait to put the fire out. Our motto is all hands, all lands. We will prevail all together. We all need to take up the same philosophy as our firefighters. We must have hope and optimism we're not hopeless in the face of climate change. We must believe that together we can change the trajectory we're on. We must have courage. We can't afford despair and despondency or giving up. We must have the courage to put these big, bold ideas out there and innovations forward and see them through. Again, I look forward to the conversations, all hands, all lands, all together. Thank you.